Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you have been following along on Instagram, you knew this makeover was on its way, and that is our butler's pantry slash laundry room. Since we've moved in over eight years ago, I've always wanted to make this room a pantry. We were using the old hall closet as a pantry for now to store food, but my idea was to eventually knock the back wall out of the closet and then put a wall back up where the closet doors were so that we could use that same area where the shelves currently are, but access them from the other side. So the first step was to remove this wall completely and then Thomas reframed the new wall, covered it in sheetrock and then we covered it with shiplap. We have a few videos on our channel about how he does our shiplap, but basically he gets five by eight sheets of plywood and rips them down into four inch strips. We have different variations of this, so sometimes they're four inches, sometimes we've done eight inches, but this is the same technique he did for our ceilings and we have been loving the look of running them vertical. So we first covered this new wall with shiplap and I know I'm painting it a light cream color, but I ended up changing my mind and painting this wall the same greenish color we end up painting our cabinet. So I'll explain that a little more when I get to it. We bought our cabinets at Lowe's and these are actually upper cabinets. They were a lot cheaper and putting two with a corner along the back wall fit perfectly. Thomas just ran some two by fours beneath them to elevate them to the right height for the counter. And then we put one more cabinet on the other side of the corner cabinet. We bought one piece of butcher block from Lowe's and Thomas used cardboard as a stencil to get the exact shape we needed for the counter. And then he used that stencil to cut the counter shape out. I painted the shiplap in this room ivory dust from Valspar. This is the color I've used on just about every wall in our house. Even our exterior is painted in this color. So I have that paint color down, but again, I will have everything linked and listed below if you're wondering about colors or links to anything else that I'm sharing. And for the cabinets, I ended up mixing two paint colors together. Our cabinets and our kitchen are virtual taupe and I used half of that paint and then half of this green paint. Again, I will have the name of that listed below. I don't have it on me right now, um, but I mixed half and half to get the final green color. I originally painted it with just the green, but it was a little too green for me. So the virtual taupe muted that a bit and gave it more of a taupey mushroom color. Now for the floors, we did the same flooring in here that we did in our family room last year. We have a more thorough tutorial that I will link below, but Thomas uses different pine boards. Some are four inches thick, some are six inches, and there's not really a pattern here. I like when he installs them randomly, but for the stain color, he first goes on with this light color. Again, I'll have that listed below, but he will cover the whole board in this whitish stain, and then he will go over it with the same rag, he will go over it with a darker stain. And when he does it this way, we tested this a million times when we did the floors in the living room and doing this combo makes it a perfect color. So this is the technique that he does. And then to seal it, he covers it with polycrylic. I didn't get a shot of him doing that, but he does the exact process on the countertop, which you will see in just a minute. But for the floor, he did three coats to really seal these floors. For the butcher block countertop, he's doing the exact same technique as he did with the floors. So first coating it with the white stain and then going over it with the darker stain. And then to finish it off, he is sealing it with the polycrylic. We always use the ultra flat so it doesn't look shiny, but that's really just a preference. Any polycrylic will work, but you'll want to apply it with this applicator to make sure it goes on really smoothly.
One thing I really wanted for this room was an arched entrance, so we got rid of the barn door and Thomas widened the entrance about eight inches and that made a huge difference over here. He first framed in two corners to create the arch and we actually ripped all of our old shiplap off the walls and then he ripped them in half. So they were eight inches and they were installed horizontally. So we cut them to be four inches and now they are installed vertically. And that just flows better with the rest of the upstairs because all of our upstairs shiplap, at least in the kitchen area, is all vertical. All right, really quickly, I had to mention this because I've had my eye on a Smeg fridge for years, maybe five years or more, um, but I could never pull the trigger because they're so expensive. But I found this on Facebook Marketplace, which was actually what kind of catapulted us to finally do this room. So the fridge was a fourth the price of what they sell for online. It's still a brand new fridge, but when it was shipped to the other owners, there were a few dings on the back side and like one down on the bottom. So you honestly can't see them. It looks brand new. It was brand new when we plugged it in, like it still had all the wrapping and everything on there, but I truly couldn't believe that I found such a score. So we did move our other fridge out to the garage and that was the plan was just to have another fridge outside, which I've always wanted to have one out there anyway. So we do have plenty of fridge and freezer space. Plus we do have another deep freezer. But back to the room to finish this off i wanted to add some shelves with pegs beneath so thomas got the measurements of everything and then stained these pieces of wood um the corbels the pegs all of that he put it together outside i always buy my pegs on amazon i do get a lot of questions about these so i will have them linked below and now he is just installing these shelves he's running one across the back wall the wall right next to it and then another one above the washer dryer And the last thing I wanted to do to finish off this room was to build some kind of wooden box to cover the washer and dryer. I love the look of old English cottages and as much as I love our new washer unit, I wanted to add some cottage touches over here. So he framed this in and made it large enough that it would not only cover the washer dryer, but also have a little space to the side where I could hide my laundry baskets. And then he also built a little shelf in here that I could store all of my laundry supplies on. And I will show you what that looks like in just a second. Here is the final reveal. I am beyond in love with this space. Now when you're sitting in the dining room, you can see right into the space and it just flows perfectly with our kitchen and really the rest of our upstairs. I also have to give Thomas a huge shout out because he goes above and beyond for all of the projects around our home. He literally takes any idea I have and creates it even better than I imagined. So I'm just grateful that I have access to his skills because anything I come up with, he just gets right on it and he always exceeds my expectations. that's everything for this video thank you guys so much for watching i hope you got some inspiration from this video if you haven't already hit that red subscribe button make sure you do that and i will see you guys in the next video